Hey guys, what's up? It's Carl here. And as this video is live, I should hopefully be parked on a beach somewhere in the Philippines as this episode is all about the tech essentials that you'll need when you do end up traveling. There is a volcano warning right now. So this is recorded a couple days before I'm leaving. So let's keep our fingers crossed that I'm actually there. I just wanted to make this video on some of the useful tech that you should take with you when you're traveling. I have traveled quite a bit and I do travel with quite a bit of tech. So I think I know a couple of things. Here are some of my essentials. The first thing that you'll probably bring with you to, of course, carry around all of your gear, some of your clothes is a backpack. And I've recommended these before on the channel. They're the Air SF Duffel. And why I love them so much for traveling, they have a front loading zipper. So it's super easy to get to all your contents, whether it is tech, whether it's clothes, toiletries, maybe even a pair of shoes. A second bag that you should consider if you're going to somewhere wet is a wet sack. So if you have expensive, say, camera gear that you bring with me, having a wet sack means it will stay dry even if you're submerged underwater. You roll up the top and this is now fully waterproof. I've brought this to Southeast Asia, to Europe. It's been dunked in the ocean and has saved thousands of dollars of tech. So for I think 10, maybe $15, I think it's a worthy investment. And when you're not using it, you can always roll it up and it fits into another backpack. And to talk about the cameras that I'm using, I technically have two, maybe three, depending on what your definition of a camera is. I'm rolling with my tried and trusted A7R III. I'm a big fan of Sony cameras just because of the size. And like I said, I travel all the time having something this small and compact. That's the bonus of having a mirrorless camera. Going with two compact lenses, the first is the 85 1.8. That takes most of my Instagram shots. And if I am vlogging, we're going with the Zeiss 18 mil. Both of these are F 2.8 on a full frame sensor. You don't really need much more than both of these focal ranges. For all of my underwater shots, I am bringing my GoPro Hero 8. I was on the fence of getting the Hero Max. I think that's the latest edition of GoPro. But if you're going somewhere tropical, somewhere where you're in the water, take full advantage of GoPros or if you have an underwater housing. Some of the best shots that you can get are shot with GoPros because they can just go anywhere and you don't need to worry about them getting wet. And technically my third camera, this is a drone, still takes photo and video. This is the Mavic Pro. I've had this now for almost three to four years. I haven't needed to upgrade. I've heard that the Philippines has some of the most beautiful beaches in the world. Hoping to get some very cinematic shots and trying to do one of those fabled vlogs that I've always been mentioning. I know a ton of you have said, can I get back into the vlog game? Let me know if I should do a vlog. I'll leave a poll up here. I will make it worth it with some beautiful drone shots. And the next piece of tech I'm bringing with me is actually a smartwatch. I'm leaving my OG mechanical watch at home and I've chosen to go with the Amazfit T-Rex and I checked out their booth at CES and that's where I got this and I've been using it ever since. The big thing for me is of course battery life and this lasts 20 days on a single charge. So I've only charged it once, probably will charge it right before I go and since I'm heading out for two weeks, I don't even need to worry about bringing the charger. But it's got something ridiculous like 12 military grade certifications. It's got a 1.3 inch AMOLED display that's always on. So even when I'm glancing at it, I can always tell the time. And I am hoping to keep up my workout game while I'm on vacation. So I'll be rocking this guy. It has 14 different sports modes and that's way more than say the Apple Watch. They have one dedicated to weightlifting, which I'm into. It has water resistance up to 50 meters, so perfect when I'm swimming in the ocean, and it has high precision GPS when I am going on the occasional run or hike. And it comes in at only $130, so I'm keeping the expensive watch at home. I'm just being a bit more safe and practical with my smartwatch. Let's switch to some main devices now. And when I was talking about the cameras, I was really serious about keeping things lightweight. It's the biggest tip that I can give you guys when you're traveling. That's why I'm going with a 13 inch ultra lightweight laptop. 
This is HP's Elite Dragonfly. It comes in right at around 2.2 pounds, so it's even lighter than my MacBook Air or even my LG Gram. It's one of the most secure laptops of 2020, but the key thing for me is of course portability. It works like a laptop. I can use it in tent mode or even like a dedicated tablet. So it's almost like a three in one. It's got that 360 hinge that HP laptops are kind of known for. And the device that most people rock when they're traveling is of course their smartphone. Naturally, I'm bringing mine as well. We've got my iPhone 11 Pro Max. I am bringing Apple's battery case, which extends the life to around two days. I'm sure there will be times where I can't juice up my iPhone and this just increases its longevity. And the last main device will go to my Nintendo Switch. I would label gaming stuff as optional. You can usually get by mostly on mobile gaming, but if you cannot stick your console down, you gotta grab a Nintendo Switch when you do travel. The portability obviously is key. No one wants to travel with an Xbox or a PlayStation. And lastly, we'll finish off with accessories. And I think this is where you can get a lot of variation. You can either choose to bring all of these or none of them in general. We'll start with this end first. This is of course, Manfrotto mini tripod. I don't think I need to say anything else about this. It mounts your camera. It can mount your GoPro. You can use it as a selfie stick. Bring one, it's 15 bucks, you can't go wrong. If you are someone that has a bit of downtime and like to relax on vacation, hang out by the beach, Make sure you do pack a Bluetooth speaker. I've got this one from Sony. It's the SRX XB2. It's got grains of sand embedded into the speaker, but it is waterproof. It survived and still sounds just as good as on day one. Peak design strap, I think this is pretty essential. If you are gonna lug around a DSLR or a mirrorless cam, you wanna still be able to use your hands. Bring a strap that you can always clip your camera to. That way when you are on a hike, it can just kind of hang off to the side. I'm bringing with me my portable SSD, plugs in right with USB-C on the same theme of lightweight and tiny. Bringing a four port USB hub to of course charge up all of my tech here. And last but not least, we've got a pair of noise canceling headphones. Not saying that I'll be listening to music on the go through headphones, just solely for that 20 hour flight. Anyways, I think that will pretty much wrap up my best go-to tech travel essentials. If you have any more upgrades or any other ideas, very happy to hear them as I'm always looking to tweak my tech travel pack. Really keeping my fingers crossed that at this exact moment, I'm kicking it on a beach somewhere. Hopefully that volcano has not exploded. Let me know if you guys do wanna see that Fable travel vlog. I haven't vlogged in the longest time, but always happy to bring back those memories. And it kind of shares my life with you guys a bit more than what you see here in the studio. And yeah, hope to catch you guys in a vid over in the Philippines or maybe even back here in the studio if things didn't work out. Peace.